Hello, today I'm working on an Asus Transformer. This is a T100A, I think. Yeah, T100TA. And this is a tablet computer that has a keyboard interface on the bottom of it that docks into this keyboard. And this keyboard has the facility to support uh, an external hard drive. This particular one doesn't have an external hard drive but uh, they pretty commonly do. In this case, the computer, the keyboard is not working properly. Um, several keys are mistyping. So when you type a, an O, it types a six, for example. There are probably 20 keys that are malfunctioning. I tried replacing the keyboard with another one on eBay find, and it does exactly the same thing with exactly the same keys. So that tells me that the issue is not the keyboard, but is instead, uh, hopefully, just this connector. Um, now, I purchased another motherboard. This connector is baked onto the motherboard. It's part of the motherboard, or soldered onto the motherboard. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to just replace the motherboard or try to replace the connector on the motherboard. Each of those two repairs comes with its own challenges. Replacing the motherboard would probably be the easiest technically, but the user's data, there isn't really much data on here actually. Uh, it has Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. I think it's Windows 8.1. And not a whole lot from a user account perspective, although several passwords are saved. Uh, so I think all I would need to do is go in and just document the user accounts that I would want on the new system and then swap motherboards and then hope that it's got a Windows, uh, an activated Windows installation on here because that might be tricky if it doesn't, trying to transfer the Windows license from the old one to the new one. So this is all, all there is to it is this. There's storage soldered onto the board. It's got 32 gigabytes of storage. I think four gigs of RAM. It's got an SD card reader here, and then uh, micro USB, and I think that's micro HDMI, audio connector, and then this keyboard connector. I presume that's the CPU, and maybe a graphics chip, I don't know. So I feel like replacing this connector would be very difficult. This would be fairly advanced heat station work you know, micro soldering. Um, I mean, I can see that there are, there's probably 32 pins on this little connector, but you can't see them all. So there, you know, I can see the back row of pins, but there's another row of pins underneath. And so it would mean flowing solder into those pins. And there are a lot of other very small components right next door. So I would worry, I would worry that I'd need to apply too much heat to this board to properly replace that connector. So I'm going to try to replace the whole motherboard, which means I need to get in here and make the data, make a backup copy of the data. So I'm going to do that now. And because the keyboard is malfunctioning, I'll just use an external keyboard. Thanks. So this, this keyboard dock provides a USB 2 or USB 3 connector, so I can use my big old wireless USB keyboard. There it's coming on, I can see a power light. So we've got power. So I'm just going to make a backup of the customer's data and I'll be back uh, when I'm ready to do the hardware replacement. Okay, so I've backed up the data. There wasn't much, um, just the websites that she uses and the usernames and passwords and so on. So I'm going to shut down and see if we can swap this motherboard. I'm going to put on my ground strap because I'll be inside this thing in no time, I think. Um, I think I just popped this case off. It's a plastic case, just like a tablet. It's got a, an LCD panel, and there's a seam right, right there. 
that I should be able to get a pry tool into. Yeah, you can see where the seam is when you look under here. It's basically right there. So let's see what we can do. Try not to scratch anything. I don't want to bend any of these ports either. Well, this is the port. These two are just guide pins, basically. Mm, I don't know the easiest way in here. Maybe I'll try a plastic tool so that there's less risk of me uh, damaging anything. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, that was easy. I just didn't want to scratch it with the metal tool. So I was being very careful, perhaps too careful. Okay, so that corner went, that's good. That's going quite easily on most of these. Uh, right around the corner, it gets a little tighter, but I'm just I'm trying not to pry too hard because I don't want to break anything. So that's off. Right. Battery. This battery's just been charging. It's taken a while to charge. Up to 21%. It took maybe 45 minutes, half hour at least. Um, it was taking 1.5 amps at 5 volts, 5.1 volts. Which I thought that I had fully charged this battery when it was sitting here, but then it's been on the shelf for a few days almost a week and then I plugged it in and it was completely flat the battery was totally dead so I don't know if it was running and discharged or if it's got a weak battery but there's some cap tan tape here holding the battery connector in place and I'm not sure how the battery itself comes out it might be stuck down I'm not sure I'm gonna pull this a little lower so we get some optical zoom, and I'll remove some of this digital zoom. Okay. Uh, so there's a plug that I should be able to just walk out of here. There we go, it's moving. Get another plastic tool to put under there. And those wires and pop that out okay so now battery's unplugged might not actually need to remove the battery from the chassis because the motherboard is simply here i wish i had a micro hdmi yeah. so where's the video connector along here there are two connectors We've got audio. Uh, this looks like a little header for some switches. This is an I.O. board or buttons. I can't tell what that is. Oh, that's the webcam. <sighs> so it looks like there will be a screw under here. When I compare it to the other to the new one, I can see there's a screw hole right there. So there's one under this tape. So that tape is going to have to come up, obviously. There are a lot of fine components under here. Uh, let's see, what is that? There's a ribbon cable there. It's not terribly sticky, thankfully. Okay, I'm just going to bend that back. MB top, uh oh, and then so this little piece of foam that's on this one next to these two connectors is actually on top of the two connectors in the customer's setup. So I'm gonna have to try to get that off without damaging anything. 
Or is it attached to the cable? Let's see if I can leave it attached to the cable, but expose the sockets. Because there's two connectors. It looks like maybe two connectors in one cable. I don't know. Hmm. I don't like this. Because if I damage that cable, it's all over. I don't have any way to replace that. So thankfully, this adhesive is coming up without stressing that cable. Okay. Now I'm going to have to put that back on. I'm just going to temporarily stick it here on the battery. All right. <clears throat> so these are flip connectors, a little zero insertion force connectors. This is the audio connector. That's all baked onto the motherboard. So I've got the audio and an antenna. So I'll disconnect that antenna. Then the audio is on a white connector. It's two cables that have a little bit of shrink tube here. It's all very small. Maybe I'll zoom way in here. Okay, that came out no problem. We'll pop this up. As I try to. There we go. Take that ribbon cable out. There's a ribbon cable here. It's taped down, which might make this a little tricky. Mm. It's really quite inflexible, that cable. I'm going to take the rest of this tape off of here. Give me some room to flex. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's off. This one here is a similar cable. I want to try to get under it. I don't know about that one. I'm going to do that one last. Actually, all three of these last. They're, un they're unclipped. So when I take the motherboard, I'll slide them out of those cables. These three here. So I'll take some screws out. It's tight. So it looks like I take this out. And this one. So that screw is turning, but it's not coming out. All right, so what's up with that one? Let me just back out a little bit. I'm a little worried about that screw that won't come out. Shoot. Mm. Like it's still got some bite. Ah, there we go. Ah, thermal compound is what I was stuck on. So that screw is not an issue. These clips are released. So I can get this. <laughs> Might be a juggling act to get this back in. So I've got this cable coming out. I can see that these don't seem to be moving. There we go. And there's the last screw. OK. Ah, so it's not thermal compound, it's a thermal pad. I don't have a new one, so I'm going to reuse this one. I'm going to flip open these sockets. So that, I think, is the longest one, which seems happy enough to pop in. And these two are in. All right. That looks in. That looks okay. 
See if we can get these other. I'm going to do this ribbon cable first because it's going to be the hardest one. I'm going to use this tweezers. There we go. Come on now, slide in there. Did it slide in? Yeah. Okay, and then this one. Let me get that unstuck from that tape. Let's put some screws in the motherboard. So that's the one that seemed like it was spinning but didn't have any impact before. So it's like there's nothing for it to grip onto. I don't know. Um, is this fitting properly? Yeah. Just the screw holes kind of far away. These screws are a lot longer than I would expect for a tablet, but I guess this is rather thick as far as tablets go. Okay, I'll do the audio connection and then the antenna. Okay, that's everything. Hopefully this fits nicely still. All right, this is closed up. So we've got a little white light. Asus logo. And it looks like Windows is loading. Now this is going to be Windows 10. It'll be a different installation. I have no idea what's on here. I might plug it back into the power though. The real question is whether the keyboard works properly. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm going to plug it in just so we have some kind of power going into it. I don't know if this is going to get enough current off of this source here, but uh, Better than nothing, I think. No. And let me plug it into the keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna go through the Windows setup. I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, well this computer actually has Windows 8.1 on it, just like the customer's computer, but it's nearly empty, so because these things only have 32 gigabytes of storage on the internal drive, it's difficult sometimes to install Windows 10. So this one currently has 15 gigabytes free. I'm gonna take advantage of this and try to install Windows 10. So we will see if it works. Mm, here we go. Okay, I'll be back with an update. So Windows 10 installed just fine on this computer. And I've got Windows 10 and all the updates installed. I've got the, the customer's profile set up the way it used to be. So this one was a success. Thanks for watching.